Hello everyone, it's me again. Once again, you should notice by now, I normally try to do an upload every month, but hopefully I should be getting one done, hopefully next week or so. Just been a little busy, same, bu same old bullshit, just work, this, that and the other. I would like to say, um, from my last video about my DIY jacket, a load of you have been saying that you weren't able to see the, um, the video because of the music. What I want to do now, because I realised that it's because of the certain songs I was using, I'm going to be sticking to just my original music for now, so hopefully this won't happen anymore. But what I wanted to do today, a friend of mine recommended to, to do a, another reaction video. Most of you seem to like these reaction videos for some reason. Once again, apologise for this, very minimal makeup, it's horrible weather, I'm feeling very groggy, but I thought it's about that time I need to make another video. Now, the video my friend wanted me to do was called Punk Fashion and Beauty from Around the World. Now, this one's interesting because normally I do goth reactions, but I thought that it's still the alternative fashion. Now, punk does play loads of major blue print roles in the goth subculture, especially in post-punk, and I'm more than happy to give my opinion out for anything. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, okay. Punk Around the World. New York. Never yeah, very romantic. Punk fashion. Goes against normal cultural norms. Very by judging rocks like Kai Smith. DR1. Chris and Heavy Influence. Leather jackets. Shared denims. Leather t-shirts. See. I understand this is where my personal preference comes in. Look, there was this big debate where it's punk coming from America or Britain. Now, the way how I see it is punk is a... American ideology, which was later developed for better from Britain, it was Mark McLaren's idea by using the influence and management he did with the New York Dolls, which had this glam punk type of movement, what they called punk back then. But obviously, when it was brought into America and the Sex Pistols came along, that was what we were given the uh, traditional stereotypes and semiotics of punk. So, the way how I see it, that originally punk was this American formatted idea, but then Britain made it into what it is. The issue I have is with Ramones, I would never really have classed them as proper punk if you want to say. I know it's a little bit ridiculous to say from my perspective, but the way how the, we were taught and how the blueprints of punk was actually set in from me growing up in Britain, I'm so used to like the idea of the Sex Pistols and the Clash and the Exploited and this Oi Oi movement as well. I appreciate what they're trying to do with the New York scene because I do understand in that perspective, like Patti Smith, yes, with the leather jacket that was a very big trademark in the New York punk scene, especially with the Ramones and all that. Rip Denims, yep, that's once again another one in um, Demiotic as well. But the only problem is I have with the Ramones and all that type of stuff is it was just basically sped up surf rock. If you listen to uh, Rock and Roll High School and all that stuff, you can tell that it was very still rock and roll very influenced, whilst the British hip punk, it was a lot more against the rebellion. They literally took it to another stand, especially with the labour movement and the um, upper class uh, rebellion became a political movement as well as a subcultural movement. The issue I will have with punk nowadays is a case of with punk becoming such a big fashion, especially back in the 70s and 80s, it was seen as a counterculture, and very right so, it was a very predominant counterculture. But unfortunately, as years progressed, it became more within the subculture, so it ended up narrowing down. But I will have to admit that the 70s New York look is spot on. Uh, the historical um, background and the fashion is more or less there. Minimal makeup, yeah, I can see that. London, yes! This is what I'm talking about. Matt McLaren brought New York punk style back into London, yeah. Leather jacket, zippers, spikes, pattern tart, yep, tartan pattern. See, that's what I was talking about. That's the punk which we're all synonymously known with. Um, once again, Malcolm Klein and Vivian Westwood did create this type of new brand of punk fashion, especially with their um, shot called Sex, which was very well known for the punk gear. The makeup, yes, that was very. Um, I would say that was pr pretty important, especially within like the androgynous scene of punk, which helped influence um, like the glam punks and the goth music. Um, yeah, I'd say that's quite spot on. Obviously, the only issue that mo most of the bands who, who were labelled as punk back then had with um, the sex shop and the whole London punk scene is the fact that it became a commodity, that everyone wanted to dress punk, it became the norm and it kind of lost its meaning. But that, I'd say, was absolutely spot on, on every way, shape and form. Germany. 
In Germany, punk or German new wave? Yes, I agree. Hair colour? Okay. Dramatic makeup. See, they're already doing this in the 70s in, Lon in London. Okay, before I go on anymore, the German scene, the German punk scene was interesting because a lot of stuff that they mentioned was already adapted within what was already in the British subculture. So, to me, this is nothing new. If anything, it's looked more death rocky more than just plain um, German punk. Still love it though, but I couldn't help to make that connection. Iran. Iranian punk. Okay. Brave, I love that. Wow. Sweet. Fair play. I love that. Oh, man. I've never heard this one. Small community in the main state around during decades of military rule. Ooh. That's part of hair. Dark eye makeup. Little jackets, heavy boots. Now that is rebellion, especially from what I just read about the military rule. Now that is gutsy. I mean, I was fair play to the Iranian uh, punk subculture and this subculture. I've never heard this subculture before, and I think it's amazing. Anything that is against like some type of austerity or type of military rule, and you're still rebelling against, even though you could get into serious trouble or more. Now that is proper guts. That's proper punk. I love that. But wow, the makeup on. That looks really, really good. I love the whole getup. Kind of gothy. New York glam. Yep. New York saw the beginning of glam punk, we must said earlier. New York dolls. Bold eye makeup, yep. Yep. Tight pants. Leather. Glitter. Yep. But to be fair, that's what you can expect from like, the glam metal scene. I can see where that influence came from, really, because loads of bands like Motley Crue and Wasp were kind of influenced with, within the punk scene as well, so that doesn't surprise me. And once again, that was pretty spot on from fashion wise. California. Hardcore punk out of Los Angeles, true. Lisa to Mosh, I'm going to the star. Minimal endurance. Yeah. Colour. Yeah, that's what I noticed about that scene, especially when the hardcore scene came out, it became less more of an aesthetic but more of a physical um, subculture, which I find, because a lot of it was moshing, a lot of it was more in your face, pushing around, so that's why I agree it was very minimal because it didn't really have to express it the way how you dress to feel the music. Plus, no, in fact, hardcore music ended up involving and influenced the branch of emo core, which, thank you very much, American punk. Awesome. Cuba. Ooh. Nice for the outcasts of some homeless. I remember watching a gay documentary about this. It's Joe Clothing. Their face. I like that. Ooh, South African. A hardcore punk. Yeah, I can see the skater vibe shredding jeans once again going back. Once again, once again I can see the relation and the influence going back from the early 70s and the early 80s movements. But no, fair play. I love it when I see um, subculture movements, especially in countries like that. That's so cool. Oh, wow. Russia. Pussy Riot. Ha! Huh? Knew it. Well, protest punk format in Russia, music scene 2010. Good type. Do you know I like that, actually. I remember when the Pussy Riot term um, controversy came out when they did that protest around the church. At the time, I thought that was really gutsy, and obviously still keeping to the establishment, that type of left ideology. I have recently saw a video where Pussy Riot got um, pepper sprayed by the Russian military. Um, once again, the protest, I can kind of understand why, but in all fairness, it's a case of that if they wanted to score them out, they shouldn't have used that type of violence, regardless of what um, standstill you have on a political view. 
I felt really disgusted when I saw that, to be honest. But no, that's pretty accurate. I somehow knew that the Pussy Riot scene was going to come, especially that Banaclava look. Japan. Oh, the Harajuku scene. This is so cool. Harajuku Pong took to an aesthetics, yes, and applied in the fashion. Yep, very true. That's basically the genre. See, I like the Harajuku scene of punk because uh, if, I'm, if I'm mistaken correctly, um, the punk scene also had a big impact on the visual case scene in Japan, which you'll find in most of the old bands like um, X Japan and all that lot. But no, that's quite true. Very westernised that type of influence was, especially in the London scene, where the d mohawks and the studded jackets came a lot more prominent and once again become symbolism of the overall punk subculture. And that's my reaction. Um, once again, I have to say, just an overall um, conclusion. Once again, the beginning starts off very strong. The correct um, upbringing of punk. Can't go wrong with that. Um, once again, the London punk scene was absolutely brilliant. Point pinpointed everything that we all know and love about the London punk scene. The fashion was accurate. The new German punk, once again, very new wave influence, spot on. Then when I saw the nuance, and especially these, what we consider developing countries, which was uh, the Iranian, um, the South Africa and all that one, that blew my mind. I loved seeing stuff like that. Very against the establishment, which I personally say, very non-conforming, which I think is important, especially in a time like this, where enough, we don't need something that is just a commodity and just a way of conforming to this uh, teenage identity. It, to them, that is their proper lifestyle. That's what they have to go through. I love that. And no, that, that's really put a smile on my face. Anyhow, I'm glad that you like that. And hopefully next week, I'll end up doing a room tour, as that's what many um, people have popped up to me about. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.